Hi, my name is Gulam Bahadur, consultant clinical andrologist. The question that I have been asked today is how do you manage male factor infertility and unexplained infertility when it comes to IUI? The first question is actually very easy. I have spoken so much about um, gaining uh, with male factor. The issue is one of getting more sperm and that and that actually there is very little problem or there should be relatively little problem with regards to the woman. So in order to get more sperm you can uh, do one of two things. The first obvious one I have spoken at length is consecutive ejaculates. But let's just consider before they come to the clinic they are advised on what abstinence to have and often the abstinence that is mentioned to them is derived from the WHO criteria of which ranges anything between two and seven days. These concept, these uh, guidelines are actually redundant for a subfertile relationship because uh, the WHO criteria were actually derived from men with proven fertility. We actually know very little about men with uh, in a subfertile relationship. Therefore, it is very important that you pay attention to abstinence times because I have managed to get men with very low sperm numbers to have long abstinence uh, such as 20 days. Now you may not believe this but you may try it out. There's absolutely nothing wrong to try things out uh, which, are, which do not involve the, any intrusive me uh, methodology. This is completely non-intrusive. What is wrong with a long abstinence? People say that the motility will decline. Of course, that may well be the case, but it is not necessarily the case that the motility will decline. Now, you get the cell turnover increased, and when you have the cell turnover increase, you will also uh, uh, then try and achieve a consecutive ejaculate. That consecutive ejaculate will inevitably will have better sperm motility. When you have then both groups, uh, both samples, the first and the second, produced within half an hour of each other, you can centrifuge it, get the pellet, wash the sperm sample, and then finally pull the sperm together, the, the, the pellets together and hopefully you should have enough sperm there to make a viable case for intrauterine insemination um, and ideally you should be aiming for 5 million motile progressive sperm. <coughs> right, the second question that I've been uh, subjected to is how do you manage the unexplained group? And remember Unexplained itself, unexplained is not a di diagnosis, it's a failure to diagnose uh, the patients. And uh, if you were to perhaps look at cases where if you did a full semen analysis, a lot of people miss out on the MAR test. The MAR test was never set, was, was a guesstimate as to what is positive and what is negative because no data existed. If you look carefully, even small amounts of antibody positive patients will give you an indicator that that sperm will not traverse the cervical mucus because the cervical mucus is full of glycoprotein. And anything with antibodies will stick like magnets within that glycoprotein network. So it's an issue about wanting to place that sperm beyond the, the cervical mucus. And ICSI is not the answer. There's no, it's never been the evidence. There's been no evidence to show that sperm with antibodies need to be placed uh, into the oocyte. So the management of unexplained needs to change. The unex unexplained infertility needs to change. And the first thing you do is that you know that there may well be a bigger problem with a woman. So you need to improve the number of, uh, of follicles in that woman. You need to go beyond the, the one follicle that you normally aim for. Go for two, possibly three. You remember in the unilateral uh, obstruction uh, and IUI cases, 
uh, the IUI success rate is exactly one half of the normal success rates that people experience. So the way you can overcome it is give an extra follicle in it. I would be, I would like to say, make sure that you have two follicles. I'd like to go beyond that and aim for three follicles in these sort of cases, but but be very be careful about managing the risks. Be prepared to cancel the cycle if need be, uh, because we don't want multiple pregnancies here, because multiple pregnancies are not good for anyone, certainly not the child nor the mother. But these are just one, that is just one of the factors that I'm looking at. And the other factor is for unexplained, go for a, what you call a rainbow insemination, if you know, I don't know whether that is a correct term, but, but meaning a two day insemination. Day, uh, just begin on day one, uh, on the optimal day, say 20 hours and perhaps 36 hours post-trigger and I think we hope that you will capture the follicle at the right time. There is absolutely no harm in patients having intercourse on either side of that uh, period. I hope that I've reflected on some of the issues. I know that I can't possibly answer all the issues regarding unexplained. Thank you.